One simple and definitive proof that you are not living on a spinning ball orbiting around the sun. Ah, of course, the one thing. As we all know, science is always predicated on one thing, and not countless amounts of evidence including observations, inference, and testing, but just a single thing that doesn't need any of the other evidence to line up with it in order to be believed as fact. No wait, that's just how flat earthers think science works. Because literally nothing they believe lines up with either reality or especially egregiously with the other proofs that they have. And then they wonder why everyone thinks they are kind of dumb. Anyway, what one proof does do that today, Eric? Hope it isn't dumb, he lied. Is the fact that daytime and nighttime never switch places as they must. They need to do what now? Who the f says they need to switch places? What does that even mean? All oh, right, you're basing your entire understanding of the heliocentric model of our solar system on an extremely simplistic picture, aren't you? Christ. For the heliocentric model to be true. Well, it depends on which heliocentric model you use, because the older heliocentric model is that the universe spins round our sun, which is, well, wrong. I mean, it's a good sun, and it does have incredibly powerful gravitational pull compared to everything nearby, but it ain't spinning the universe around itself. That's why I added in of our solar system, because then it's bang on, that everything nearby spins around the sun, because, well, that's how it works, mate. According to the globe doctrine, Earth makes one complete rotation on its axis every 24 hours. I mean, I don't know about your poisoning the well with terms like doctrine. You do do that a lot for some reason, almost like you ain't got a leg to stand on, so you have to be a sneaky little shite. But according to all available evidence, yes, the Earth spins around about every 24 hours. I mean, sort of, but it's good enough to explain it that way for a very, very basic understanding of how things work while simultaneously orbiting around the sun and completing one full revolution every 365 days. Look at you getting a basic grade school explanation of how days and even years work. I'm very proud of you, Eric. If you want to impress me even more, you'll learn to count up to 10 without using your fingers and how to change your shoes without falling over. Although I'll be honest, I'm not holding my breath on that one. If this was truly happening, however, as you can see from the following image, the daytime and nighttime sides of the globe would have to flip every six months. Again, what does that even mean? Daytime is just when wherever you are is pointing towards the sun. This day and night flipping idea doesn't really mean anything. And frankly, 24 hours is a man-made scale. It's just literally the time it takes for the sun to be at the highest point in the sky each day. So how or why would that be any different? Although, there I go, expecting an actual explanation from a flat earther. Stupid me. For a more detailed illustration of this, imagine the sun rising at 6am in New York on the summer solstice. I mean, I could imagine that, but sun rises at like 525 in New York on summer solstice. So, you know, it would have to take some pretty serious imagination to be stood there for 35 minutes to then imagine the sun rising again. Look, I know it's petty, but the fact that he couldn't even be bothered or more likely isn't smart enough to check such basic pieces of information is one of the many, many, many nails in the coffin of literally everything the guy ever says. After three months of 24-hour rotations, the globe would be 90 degrees from its previous position and a quarter turn away from the sun. Okay, I think I know what he's getting at, and after a bit of napkin math, yeah, it probably would be, because the Earth doesn't make a full rotation every 24 hours. Again, 24 hours is based on where the sun is. The Earth actually spins in a little less than 24 hours. It's called the sidereal period, and it actually takes 23 hours and 56 minutes. But you wouldn't notice, because again, we don't actually base days on that. We base it on where the sun is, because, you know, otherwise would be stupid. And also, it was a while before anyone knew exactly how fast the rotation of the Earth was anyway. Meaning that sunrise in New York during the autumnal equinox should now be happening at midnight. No, again, because no one who actually knows what a 24-hour period represents thinks that the location of the Earth when it spins is what we use to judge time on Earth. 
Look, let me show you my napkin maths, and fair warning, I am stupid so I might get this wrong, but if we look at the Earth's spin time, aka 23 hours, 56 minutes, versus the sun doing its thing every day, aka 24 hours, that leaves us with 4 minutes to spare. And if you multiply that by one year, aka 365 days, you get 1,460 minutes unaccounted for. And it just so happens to be a little over 24 hours. So unless I'm getting something painfully wrong, then one would expect the Earth's rotation to be six hours different every three months. But that still wouldn't mean anyone would notice, because the sun is still the only thing we use to judge the time. And Thank you very much for making me do some simple maths, because apparently it's too hard for you. After three more months of 24-hour rotations, the globe would be on the complete opposite side of the sun. Okay, so what? How would that change the sun being at its highest point in the sky being what we call midday, or 12 o'clock? It doesn't matter which way what ever bit of the planet is facing, because that's not how we calculated time, and still isn't. The only way this could possibly be confusing to you is that you don't know about the sidereal period, and if somehow you do, I can only assume then that you're just full of shit. 180 degrees from its starting position, so that sunrise in New York during the winter solstice should be happening at 6pm, or in other words, daytime and nighttime would have completely flipped from six months earlier. Again, no they wouldn't, but that's because you don't know what you're talking about. God, it's like you learnt the most basic versions of the scientific explanations, the ones that we teach to five-year-olds so they don't have to consider the more complicated shit. And that's where your entire understanding stopped, and oh shit, I just realised I'm talking to a flat earther, so of course he has the education equivalent to that of a small child. Although, I bet you could teach the small child the more complex stuff, and they would still understand it way better than old Eric here. After three more months of 24-hour rotations, the globe would be 270 degrees from its original position, and sunrise in New York during the spring equinox should be happening at noon. Right, 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 we get it, you don't get it. But instead of asking the oh-so-important question of, this doesn't make sense to me, so what am I missing? You went for the far more fun and far too aggravatingly popular solution of, well if I don't get it, then the science guys on Earth are stupid incompetent liars and must be wrong about everything because of course I, Eric, brain made out of mouldy sausages Dubai, and the smartest guy and everyone else on the globe, I mean oversized compact disc, is stupid, and I guess I'll be smug about it too, that'll really make people think I'm right. In reality, as you can test and observe for yourself, this simply does not happen, and remains yet another nail in the globe's coffin. Or that, again, no one who knows how 24-hour days work thinks that the Earth's spin is what is actually used to measure days. And the fact that you don't understand that the spin and the orbit around the sun aren't in perfect sync. No one thinks that they are, but you, for some baffling reason. Globe apologist naysayers make either one of two ridiculous claims in an attempt to excuse away this clear problem in their model. Translation. These aren't actually ridiculous claims, they are probably very reasonable explanations, but I refuse to engage with them, and instead call them ridiculous, and then move on as if saying that alone refutes the arguments. Because like all conspiracy theorists, all it takes is a claim to be made by our side for it to be right, and all it takes is saying the other people are wrong for them to be wrong. Facts and evidence be damned. Also, anybody who calls me anything I perceive as rude automatically forfeits all their arguments, even though I constantly deride my opposition, because consistency and not being a giant hypocrite be damned as well. Their first defence is to claim that days are not actually 24 hours long. No one in the history of ever has said that, because as I said before, days aren't actually measured in 24 hours. That's just what humans use to know which bit of the day they're in, especially when you can't see the sun. You remember the sun? The thing we literally use to tell what time of day it is, you f***ing doof? Oh shit, I said something a bit insulting. That must mean all the, you know, facts that I brought up that refute him are no longer valid. Oh well, in for a penny, in for a pound. You're a stupid c but instead only 23 hours and 56 minutes long. Oh, f*** me, of course, you do know about it, so full of shit it is then. And seriously, how do you get provided with all the information and then f*** up where it goes? A day is 24 hours long, that's it. The actual rotation of the Earth is 23 hours and 56 minutes long. 
the literal opposite of what you just said. So either someone told you this piece of information and got it totally wrong, but now that you've heard it, any correction is invalid, or you know what it is and are literally lying about it. Either way, dishonest is all the fucks. Shocking that a flat earther would do that. And this four minute difference per day fixes the math, allowing day and night to flip. They don't flip, you freaking moron. You are talking about relative position, but day and night are always the same. You see, day is when the sun is up and night is when the sun is down and that's it. I know it's a hard concept to understand, but there we go. Perhaps if that's not something you can fathom, you shouldn't really be trying to upturn the entirety of established science and instead go back to taste testing various brands of crayon or whatever it was you did before this travesty. Now it is true that there are two kinds of days, known as solar days and sidereal days. But let me guess, you're instead of choosing to accept the definitions for them that the evidence supports, you're going to make up a new version of them that quote unquote supports your argument without actually demonstrating why your definition is true or superior or makes a single sugar coated shit's worth of sense, right? And sidereal days are in fact 23 hours 56 minutes long. But solar days, which everyone on Earth sets their clocks by, are exactly 24 hours in duration. See, he does this a lot, and I think it's to get fellow morons on board with his ideas. He gets just enough Googleable information correct to trick them into thinking he's just stating scientific facts that everyone agrees on, and then diverts to Wacky Town based on the strength of an accurate enough description to get the ball rolling. Such an honest practice, said no one ever. Sidereal days, which nobody sets their clocks by, are actually how long the fixed stars take to make one revolution over and around our Earth plane. No, absolutely not, and they aren't f***ing fixed. The stars are actually constantly moving. You just can't tell with the naked eye. You need to, you know, actually measure them with sensitive equipment and do that work thing all flat earthers are so seemingly terrified of. And who the hell told you that's what a sidereal period was? It's the spin of the earth, not the other f***ing way around for Christ's non-existence sake. As you can observe and measure for yourself, the constellations rotate just slightly faster than the sun so that they take exactly 23 hours and 56 minutes to come back to their starting point. Measure for yourself? Yeah, poorly, and it's almost like that suggests that the Earth is in fact spinning and not the stars. Also don't get me started on the planets, which some are fully measurable to the eye to not be fixed in place. Retrograde motion, have you heard of it? But I'm sure you have some completely asinine explanation for that, which I can't wait for you to not bother telling me so yay while the sun takes exactly 24 hours, four minutes longer, to come back to its starting point. Firstly, the fact that sidereal and solar days both exist and are not exactly the same duration absolutely supports that the sun and the stars are on completely different planes, and that we are in fact orbiting the sun and that the earth is rotating. I mean, it does, no matter what wackadoodle nonsense version of reality he wants to say it supports, it's still absolutely something that makes perfect sense within the globe, boys. Sorry, not sorry. Is yet another proof that the stars and sun are moving, and not the Earth. Absolutely, categorically wrong, but you're too goddamn silly to understand why and are incapable of accepting both factual reality and your vast limitations, both in intellect and ability, but we won't hold that against you because we might accidentally touch you and catch the big stupid. If the apparent movement of the stars and sun was actually the result of us living on a spinning globe, as we're told, then there would and could only be one duration of day. What? No! How do you figure that? The fact that you think that shows that you have no idea how the interaction between the Earth's spin and its orbit of the sun affects things, and that you think having clearly done exactly zero seconds of research that there's not an explanation, is, well, completely unsurprising at this point. This diagram actually explains it rather elegantly, and in a way that even you will completely dismiss as ridiculous because you have no f***ing interest in being correct, and only in being quote unquote right, which is clearly never the same thing. Namely, the amount of time it takes to complete one full rotation. The fact that there are two different durations of rotation time for the sun and stars just further proves that they are moving at their own unique speeds over and around a motionless, fixed Earth. 
No, it proves that you don't know what you're talking about and that the Earth orbits the Sun whilst spinning and is backed up by countless amounts of evidence that not only supports that conclusion but also makes sense with all the other evidence, like how the globe model has explanations for every single phenomena and they all work together and the flat earthers have no model that accounts for everything and almost always accounts for, like, one thing at best. Almost like it's wrong. Secondly. If globe apologists want to claim solar days are now suddenly only 23 hours and 56 minutes... No one is f***ing doing that! You made that up! That's what you are saying, and literally no one else, at least who anyone should take seriously, is going to agree with that. Look at you, fighting a straw man that you made up. Oh how it is defeated so easily and burned so well. Your parents must be really proud. That's why they don't talk about you at family functions because of all the pride. Then why hasn't anyone in history ever noticed that our 24-hour clocks, which billions of people have used for thousands of years, actually fall behind reality four minutes every single day? Because time is based on the f***ing sun, you absolute brainlet! You can talk shit on this idea that you made up all f***ing day, mate. That doesn't make you smart for seeing how it's wrong, it makes you a total freaking dipshit for thinking that because you don't know what anyone is saying about anything apparently, that somehow makes you more correct. But I have some terrible news for you mate. That's not how anything works. Can you tell that my jimmies have been rustled? The reason is because it doesn't happen. And trying to claim solar days are the same duration as sidereal days just shows the disingenuous lengths these zealots will go to to cling on to their false cosmology. And there it is, the biggest piece of projection you will ever hear. Every word you said in this video, incompetent error uncorrected, every willful misunderstanding and every outright lie just shows what length you are willing to go to to cling on to your blatantly false cosmology. It'd be funny if it weren't so infuriatingly stupid. So at least we have something in common. Wait, before you go, I have something super important to tell you. It's life or death. It will change everything forever. Nope. Wait, it's gone. Oh well, probably wasn't important. But while I have you, don't forget to comment, subscribe and notify. And if you want more of my smexy voice, check out Mrs. Six's channel Spoonstar Stories, where I narrate and voice all the videos. And she does the work. And if you want to support the channel, check out the merch store for cool t-shirts, or check out Patreon, memberships and PayPal to support directly. Finally, Follow me on the medias of social to get completely pointless guff and to keep up on the latest releases. Oh, I just remembered what I was going to tell you. Whatever you do, don't touch the-